project came together because some of the um, challenges we're trying to tackle with this project, we also saw, for example, in India. So trying to put it all together. Okay, yeah. awesome. And we're going to get into it. But first, Robert, tell us what you do. Yeah, so uh, my name is uh, Robert Wango Mkumbi, mm -hmm. uh, born and raised here in Kenya. I am a community developer, a social entrepreneur, and also a youth activist. Okay, yeah. amazing. So now to you, Anna, you said that this project you started in India? Oh, no. the idea came. So, um, just, uh, so we started it in the UK, actually, mm -hmm. at university. So I go to Durham University. So I started it with um, two, like myself and one other girl. She's from Nairobi, Priyanka Doshi. And now we're a team of seven girls. Mm -hmm. Seven girls doing the project. In, um, so we started in um, the UK and now, of course, it's based in, in Kenya. So we have Robert doing the, the local leading and um, making sure it all runs well. Okay, so we want to know about the project. So, <coughs> so that you can tell us why you decided Kenya. Uh, so maybe, I don't know, which one of you is in a better position to tell us, to give us a brief about Taka Taka Zero? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. Um, so the reason we chose... Kenya and Nairobi specifically is because Priyanka, the other leader, she's from here. So she grew up, she's born and raised here. So that's why we chose, um, that was just a perfect place. Mm -hmm. And who we are as an organization is that we came together to find a sustainable solution for the abundant waste that we don't only have here, but also the places that we're from. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to come together to use technology, but also the community to um, create a way that we can use waste. So because often we think of waste as um, something we just throw away, mm -hmm. or we burn in the street um, because there's no use for it, but actually it is useful. And with the right technology, it can be a resource. Right. So that's what we're trying to do. So the main challenges we're trying to tackle is the abundance of waste without solution, as well as um, trying to work with youths because so often we're the ones with, the, with good ideas, but we just need a bit of support so that um, uh, we can get our ideas out there, as well as our food insecurity in the communities we're working in. Okay. So it's a bit of a complicated project. Has, but that was, that's what makes it special, because we really tackle a few different things at once with one model. All right, OK, yeah. interesting. Now, Robert, tell us about uh, how you go about you know, converting waste into you know, uh, something sustainable for the future and uh, something beneficial to the community. Yeah, so uh, actually in this case, uh, as Anna is saying, is that uh, what we do, uh, uh, we, int, uh, like we use a, a community cooker to do all this. So uh, actually, so we have a community cooker. Yeah, we do have a community cooker which incinerates uh, the rubbish, and uh, it's not all types of rubbish. We specifically only deal with uh, uh, paper rubbish and also plastics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, there is a way, uh, or at least I can say maybe there are some things that we consider when uh, we take this rubbish at least uh, before we incinerate it. Yeah. Okay, what are some of the things that you consider? So first, before you tell us that, I'm think so you go to uh, the, where the dumping site or anywhere where there's rubbish and then you collect it, then you separate the rubbish uh, from the recyclable one and the non-recyclable. I'm getting that you're using only the non-recyclable, the plastic, the papers, and then you put it in the incinerator, that is the cooker. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, what we do uh, actually is uh, uh, when we get the rubbish, uh, obviously there is uh, what we do uh, called sorting. We sort the rubbish and, uh, well, uh, the cooker, uh, it, there, there is a specific way it is to be operated. And in this case, uh, we always recommend that we bundle the rubbish. At least, uh, like, uh, we make a bundle out of the plastics and uh, the paper uh, waste through. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, what is the benefit of this cooker? Anna, tell us about it. Yeah, so the really great thing is, is that there's this difference between burning and incinerating. Mm -hmm. So because the cooker and its technology allows it to reach to around 1,200 degrees Celsius. So by when you're incinerating this waste, unlike when you do it in the street, um, all of the toxic gases or most of the toxic gases, the carcinogenics, um, are removed. So from the chimney, for example, you only see white white smoke and only ash is remaining. Mm -hmm. So um, what is really special about the cooker is that, of course, all we need is rubbish and you can use it to uh, boil water, you can use it to do anything in a sufria, um, chapatis, you can bake, so we do breads. And even um, the technology, it can connect to showers, so you can have hot showers. And all of this is without electricity or any other resources. Okay. 
Right. Yeah. This is quite sustainable, especially yeah. uh, because you're doing it in uh, some of the low-income areas mm. in Kenya, that is Mangare and Kebra. So how is it so far since uh, its introduction? When was it introduced and how is it benefiting the society? Yes. Yeah, uh, so uh, I guess maybe Anna can talk about uh, how it all started and uh, maybe I uh, can talk a little bit about how it is benefiting the society. Okay, sure. Uh, yeah, yeah so, um, so we started two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so November 2020, it's taken us a long, long time to be here. We actually launched the project this Saturday, so last Saturday, a week ago. And so we launched the project in Mathari at Mathari Community Outreach School. And um, so what we've been doing, we've been working with different <coughs> youth groups, first in Kibera, then in Mathare, and then that's how the project started to come along. So now we're based at this specific school where we make two meals a day for the school children. It's around 320. So we make two meals a day for these youths. Um, mm -hmm. And that's where we're based now in Mathare. But we're still working with youth from Kibera as well that are working with us. Okay. And you can see so some yeah. of the pictures uh, <laughs> yeah, mm. of you working with... Uh, school children mm -hmm. there and uh, it's amazing what you're doing out here in the community so now the students are benefiting from this and I read somewhere that uh, in your in your website I think uh, you there's there was a gap that you saw during the COVID-19 period uh, was it the COVID-19 period mm. when there was a break from school and yeah. the children were not uh, you know being yeah having being ha fed because mm. there's no school anymore so what was happening in this time so it's not just COVID-19 actually. Mm -hmm. So COVID-19 was especially uh, tricky for the school because a lot of organizations moved out. So they actually had some food programs running at the school, but with COVID-19, they, they actually we left. Uh -huh. um, but what a big challenge is, is also for the, especially for the families when there's holidays. So even the three week break that we had for the elections, a lot of families couldn't feed their children at home because they really rely on the two meals a day mm -hmm. that they receive in school. So this is what we're truly trying to work on to make sure that at least when they are in school, they're very reliable meals twice a day because sometimes even that they can't afford. Um, so even just then you saw the, the you, know, you remember the, the greens mm -hmm. with the children? So we partnered with Nestle. They uh, built a kitchen garden for us. So these greens, we can now add to the meals as well at the school. Amazing, amazing. And uh, Robert, you tell us about the, how it's benefiting the society. And we've seen that, that is one of the ways by, you know, feeding the school children and ha making sure that they have at least two meals yeah. a day. What are the other ways? And before you get to the other ways, I also read that, uh, you know, you uh, allow them to bring uh, the waste and then... Yeah there's food in return. I don't know if this only applies to the school children or also the community. Yeah, so uh, for now, since uh, the community cooker is uh, based in a school, mm -hmm. so uh, obviously it has kind of uh, uh, interfered with how we had planned for it because uh, the earlier plan was that the community cooker was to act as a swap shop in a way that uh, like people from the community were to bring in waste and in return they were to be given uh, something like uh, maybe food. Mm -hmm. and, but uh, in a school setting it's kind of different because at the same time we don't want to interfere with learning. Exactly. Yeah, so uh, uh, what we are doing now, uh, now is strictly uh, baking, uh, well, uh, preparing meals for the school kids, uh, that is breakfast and uh, lunch time. Mm -hmm. Maybe if I can talk uh, a bit uh, about uh, how the community cooker or the project is to benefit uh, the society or yeah. the community at large is mm -hmm. one thing we are working with uh, youth groups mm -hmm. and uh, so we are also uh, looking uh, into helping the youth groups uh, spe like specifically uh, there is a group from Kibira which uh, we started off uh, the project with we are planning to help them at least come up with a business uh, mm -hmm. for themselves and uh, also get funding so that they can uh, maybe uh, 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 continue with uh, what they've been doing, which is uh, they have been setting up small businesses. And apart from that, uh, like now the school is also a beneficiary of the, of the project since uh, they have a cooker and uh, we've been able to get uh, enough funds uh, for at least the pilot project, which will, be, which will be in two months, like we'll be running for the two months. What uh, is so the pilot project? Uh, like uh, what is happening now, which is uh -oh. uh, now that we have uh, the project at the Matare. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's uh, our ever first project uh, with the community cooker like and partnering with Taka Taka Zero. Okay. So uh, uh, we are trying to see like uh, how it will all go down. 
yeah, because uh, we aim to, uh, apart from the goals and achievements that uh, we hope to get from it all, also we are doing some research on it so that at least when we implement now the KUKA in another place or build it in Kibera, at least we will have some facts which will help us at least uh, escape some challenges that we, mm -hmm. we have been facing through the time. Okay. Yeah. And what are some of the challenges? So now the community cooker is only in Madere and you want to bring it to Kibra as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the challenges that you have uh, seen or experienced uh, during this time? Quite a few. <laughs> That's why it took two years. Um, but especially one of the things is because we started in the UK and we needed funding for this um, for the project. So the cooker that we work with in Mathare, it existed. It was built by Safaricom Foundation actually in 2017. But because there was no project implemented with it, they used it three times the school and then it shut down. So the structure has been there for around five years now. And so we wanted to come, introduce a project with it and repair the cooker. So what was really tricky was to find the funding for it. Um, it was quite um, expensive, especially, especially being a startup. And since the challenges that we have in Kenya are different from the UK, it was really hard to convince people that this is a good project. And it is. Mm -hmm but the challenges are different and the model just didn't quite make sense to people. So it took a while <laughs> to do that, but now we have the funding and that's why we're doing a pilot so that we have more statistics and we can really then prove to sponsors as well afterwards and say, look, this does work. This is the impact we're making. This is how much rubbish we're getting rid of and making use of. Let's do it again. Let's do it in Kibera. Let's do it um, yeah, in different areas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and how much are you helping the environment? And maybe you tell us some of the uh, sustainable development goals that you are contributing to. Yeah, go ahead, Anna. <laughs> so um, we're focusing on a few, especially with the environment, we're focusing on sustainable communities, mm -hmm. um, climate action and sustainable consumption and production. So those are the main three ones that we're focusing on with the environment because, of course, uh, we want to change this mindset towards waste mm -hmm. um, and change even the fact that in the end, we hope that in Mathari, the waste doesn't even end up on the ground anymore. So it doesn't have to be co uh, collected. For example, the youth groups we're working with, they have such great initiatives. They go out every week, collect waste, but because there's no infrastructure, then they bring it to the dump site. Mm -hmm. And the dump site is next to houses and where people are living. And then some people come there to collect to bring to another dump site. Mm -hmm. So we want to intercept this process. And now they can just bring it to us so that it doesn't even have to harm anyone. And um, on dump sites as well, it creates methane, the health impacts are just, Amazing. as you know, yeah. Great. And Robert, tell us about uh, <coughs> how you, you've said you're involving youths and youth groups in this particular project. Yeah. And uh, how is it benefiting to them creating employment? And you've said you're also mentoring them into starting their own businesses. How is mm -hmm. this going? Yeah, so, uh, so far it's been uh, a positive, I can say that, because uh, like uh, luckily maybe if I can talk about uh, the youth group that we've been working with since mm -hmm. day one, this is one chum from Kiber Raleni Saba. Mm -hmm. So uh, one thing about the guys is that they have been uh, so patient and also uh, from uh, them being involved with the project we've uh, had, uh, like we've learned a lot from the experience. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think I can say it's been good and uh, luckily for them now we are we are working towards uh, coming up with a business plan, uh, 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 like uh, before the pilot project ends, at least uh, the we, they are now working, they are uh, the main workers mm -hmm. who we are working with, uh, so they get a, a salary. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, like all, uh, uh, at least a number of uh, the youth who will be attending uh, or who will be working at least for that two months will be getting a salary and apart from that we plan to also help them come up with a business that at least they can get something to show for after the, uh, the project is done. Yeah. Okay, and also read mm -hmm. that you're helping them develop skills that they can use in their future careers. So are these skills aligned to what they want to do in future or what skills are they getting exactly? <coughs> so uh, maybe uh, uh, a better way to answer that is that apart from uh, us just giving them the platform or are giving them maybe the funds or are helping them get the fund at least to maybe uh, help mm -hmm. themselves. Another thing is uh, we are also looking into setting up workshops and inviting people from all walks of uh, careers at least uh, or uh, uh, career fields so that at least they can get to interact with them. We don't uh, want to necessarily uh, force ideas on the youth but at least to give them a chance uh, or, or to get uh, informed mm -hmm. so that at least it is easy for them to choose what they would like to do at least win life. That okay. is, yeah. 
Amazing. Tell us about the Community Kuka. It's a project. It's a so it's another organization mm -hmm. partnering mm -hmm. with you. How did you come together and what is the vision that you have as an organization? Yeah, so the Community Cocoa Foundation are the ones that create these cocos. So Jim Archer, he um, invented them and he's now, there's around 15 around Kenya. But <coughs> what we did, we reached out to Community Cocoa to bring a project to it. So what we find is really important, it's not just technology, because mm -hmm. technology is great and it has been really inspiring to everyone who hears about it because it's so unique. But what we always like to say is it's, it's a man-made problem, right? Mm -hmm. The waste. So there needs to be a community-led solution as well. So we've tried to partner with them. Um, actually, that's how we met Robert. So he used to volunteer for them. So we reached out and that's how we then met Robert and he joined, joined our team. Mm -hmm. So we're now working with Community Cooker to even in the future, we're hoping mm -hmm. maybe we can work with some of the other existing ones see if they're running as well as they could and maybe if we can help out with our business model if we could maybe improve it and make allow for more impact to come All right. what are some of the gaps that you feel that are needed to be filled mm. so far so a main thing is that you always need a constant source of, of waste and that seems mm -hmm. like an obvious yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah thinking we have yeah there's so sites, much uh, there's so much but you have to get access to it right because on the dump we can't use it. So we need communities and we need, for example, the children to be involved. That's why we've worked so much with them so that every day they have this incentive to actually bring their bags to school. We have extra bags, not their school bags. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh my God. Um, there we have Taka Taka Zero bags that we ask their parents to fill up at home okay. and so they can bring it to us. Mm -hmm. Because the cooker actually can incinerate around 30 kilos of waste in an hour. So if it's run 24 hours a day, which it can, that's a lot of rubbish. Mm. So um, we're really asking these youth groups, don't bring it to the dump site, bring it to us. Because even sometimes now, past few days, we've had to do extra collection because we haven't been receiving enough. Okay. So that's the main thing that we really have to work with the communities. So how can the community uh, come together and help even you know, communities mm. that are not uh, people from Madharia or Kibra, how can they help? Hmm, great question. <laughs> so what we're hoping actually in the future is if we can have like waste collection, like a waste collection business. So for, there's so many um, uh, professional waste collectors, right? But they collect it from your homes, even the apartment buildings, and mm -hmm. they bring it to the dump site. Exactly. Or it's burned. So what we're hoping is maybe if we can get a mode of transportation, for example, or we can set up collection points around the city or around, for example, Mathare in the different blocks, then we can just cut, people can put their waste in there specifically the one that we need and then we can come and pick it up All right. yeah quite interesting and now robert what is what what is the importance of working together with the youth and community towards achieving this goal uh, uh, sorry uh, what is the importance of working together involving the youth and the community towards this particular goal that you're having well, uh, I can't say for any community, one thing uh, uh, I can't help but think of uh, maybe uh, the impact that at least uh, when people work together, at least the kind of impact they can bring. Mm -hmm. And especially in this case, the youth, uh, since one thing, they are the people who have the energy and the time. And also apart from that, uh, now we are uh, in an information age mm -hmm. where uh, we are so informed only that what we are lacking are the tools. And uh, well, uh, that, that's about the youth, but as a community, I just feel like uh, the importance obviously is uh, at least uh, the, the togetherness uh, makes it easy for uh, the project, not only Taka Taka Zero, mm -hmm. but also for other projects to see light. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anna, uh, for people that are trying to start other projects like you mm -hmm. did this, uh, a project that actually is sustainable for our future, mm -hmm. uh, what would you advise them? As we come to a close. Yeah, yeah. So I think that's actually a big thing because we want to be, especially with the youth groups, we want to be like a prototype. So this is how it works and to show that even if it may take a long time, you need the patience, but it can work in the end and it will. Mm -hmm. And so one of the big things I would advise is to be very open-minded and that the project you might come up, come up with at the beginning is not what it will look like at the end. Mm -hmm. So every day when you're going through the project, you're meeting new people, you're meeting the community, you really have to listen because you want your project to be uh, the people to identify with it and to, to feel connected. So what we really try to do is 
everything we hear, we adapt the project. So the project Taka Taka Zero might not look the same tomorrow. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look the same as yesterday, we had new ideas. So that's really important, that's always evolving. Um, and to be patient, <laughs> yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's a very big one, yeah. um, to be patient and trust. Okay, yeah. thank you for that. And now, uh, because people, some, someone may be watching and maybe someone in government or something, and they want to support uh, mm. this initiative, so how can they do that? Yeah, so um, I think one of the big things is, um, what I always talk about with Robert, is that we really want to make sure that the government sees the youth and that they see especially these small projects mm -hmm. because often they'll just, oh, this is general, but uh, often we, we revert to big companies, to big NGOs, and that's, that's okay and that's good. But I think there's a lot of value in these smaller ones because they're very community-based and I think we need to support them, especially also with funding, with training, because the youth, they have the ideas, but they do need the support. And so that's something that we, we really hope, that people come and visit our project, come to the site, see what we're doing, and see how you as an individual, as an organization, can help and how we can help each other. Okay. Um, yeah. Robert, uh, you can tell us about the vision that you have and the short-term and long-term plans that you have towards achieving that vision as we finally come to a close. And maybe you can have, uh, Anna, your final word to the viewer that's listening. Yeah, so I think can, uh, can be, uh, we'll be in a better <laughs> position to talk so, about that. Okay, yeah. and then you can give the final word. Yeah. <laughs> so what's your vision and what are some of the plans that you have in place yeah. towards achieving that? Yeah, so our main thing is that we want to keep expanding and we want to work with more and more youth groups so that we can go and also work in different, in, in new communities. And uh, that's why we work with younger children as well, because we, those are the future leaders as well. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're really trying to do. Work with the youth, work with the community so that we can build more projects um, that may look different, but that are adapted to, to each community. So the next one that we're <coughs> starting is in Kibera. So if anyone also wants to support, they can always reach out. Um, we're always looking for any support, any funding, any uh, mentorship. So okay. that's what we're trying to do. Where can they find you on your social? So we have Instagram, um, Taka Taka Zero. Same with Facebook and LinkedIn, all Taka Taka Zero. As well as, um, please do check out our website. It's takatakazero.org. You have all the information, even if you would like to um, donate. We'd, um, we'd always really appreciate it, or if you want to join our team. Okay, awesome. Robert, uh, talk yeah. to uh, the youth out there. Tell, uh, why is it important to be innovative and to solve a particular problem in the society? And you can give your final word. Yes, yeah, so uh, 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 maybe uh, uh, in, in summary, at mm -hmm. least, uh, what I think uh, the best way to put it is uh, youth, uh, like... Uh, the future is us and the future is now. Mm -hmm. So it's high time at least uh, we come together. And uh, one thing is uh, it's not even about coming together because one thing it is something that has been there, only that uh, maybe many people don't get to see it. But in the community, people are coming together. And uh, as a nation, well, I can't go maybe a little personal into this because one thing I'm a, I'm a Kenyan. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has been uh, uh, something uh, for us uh, at this time of period, because uh, we uh, we just uh, we were just, uh, like we were just coming out of uh, the elections and all that stuff, and uh, people have really proven how uh, they are embracing change, and also how they wish at least for things to work, and uh, not only for the youth but also for the nation uh, as a whole. So. It's one thing, it's a, it's a big up to the youth because one thing, uh, they are the people who have been the most calm, they have been the people who have been promoting peace and all that stuff. And uh, also, if I was to talk about the government, at the same time, uh, the government, uh, the now government uh, that is in, uh, uh, I guess, Ruto's government, mm -hmm. And, uh, no, uh, well, what I can say is that uh, uh, the youth really came through for these guys because one thing, uh, we believe that they best understand what we go through. They understand the struggles that we face uh, to try and come up with projects and also roll out, roll out the projects. So uh, one thing I start, we really, really do hope that at least they can remember and uh, as they promise to work with youth, at least they can come to the ground, get to interact with us, and not only come to the ground because uh, they are from the ground. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, and in this case, uh, 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 what I'm happy about as a person, or uh, uh, in this case, is because that at least the community and the government are, are embracing the idea of having young people at a leadership position. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so it's really great seeing that. And now it's for the young people at leadership position to really prove that uh, the community are, are right to believe in us. So you guys, we trust in you, we believe in you. It's still too early, but at the same time, never early. So uh, uh, we want to work with you guys. We are very ready and we are waiting at least for you to reach out to us. And it doesn't have to be only Takataka Taka Zero, but all, also other projects that are trying to bring a change to the community mm. at large. Yeah. Awesome. What a good place to end this <laughs> art. Thank you very much for coming and sharing uh, uh, your project with us and what you do. And we definitely appreciate what you're doing to our community and our society. Yeah. Thank Keep you so much for having it. us. Yeah. Awesome. Thank so you. that <laughs> has been uh, Anna and Robert from Takatika Zero who are trying to fuel sustainable futures through waste conversion. And you have heard it from them if you are a youth and you can do something to contribute towards positive change in the society, then this is the time and you're welcome to join their team. You can get them at Takataka Zero across their social media platform. So this has been Sport on Tech. We'll be taking a short break. Val will be here with more. Don't go too far. We'll be right back after the short break.